1984, by George Orwell, is a dystopian novel set in the superstate of Oceania, where society is under the constant surveillance of the party led by the enigmatic Big Brother. The protagonist, Winston Smith, works at the Ministry of Truth, altering historical records to fit the party's propaganda. Orwell introduces us to this world through the first part of the novel, consisting of eight chapters. In chapter one, Winston returns to his drab flat in Victory Mansions. Here, Orwell introduces the concept of telescreens, devices that both broadcast propaganda and monitor the citizens of Oceania. Winston conceals himself from the telescreen and begins to write in a diary, an act of rebellion against the party. Chapter 2 introduces us to Winston's family and neighbors, including the Parsons family. Winston helps Mrs. Parsons unblock her sink, and during this visit, is terrorized by her two young children, ardent junior spies. Orwell presents the concept of children betraying their parents, a frightening reality in this totalitarian society. The next chapter takes us to Winston's workplace, the Ministry of Truth. Here, he alters historical records to match the party's official narrative. Winston receives a message from a co-worker, a dark-haired woman, causing him to fear that she's a member of the Thought Police, an organization that punishes even the slightest hint of rebellious thoughts. This chapter portrays Winston's daily life and explores themes of manipulation, surveillance, and paranoia. In Chapter 4, Winston continues his job of rewriting history. Here, Orwell delves into the mechanics of how history is manipulated by the party to control the population. Winston is aware of this manipulation, yet feels powerless to oppose it. Chapter 5 takes us to the canteen where Winston has lunch with Syme, a linguist working on Newspeak, the official language of Oceania. Syme discusses the purpose of Newspeak, to limit thought and prevent rebellion. Through Syme, we understand the party's manipulation of language as a tool for control. The following chapter revolves around Winston's reflection on his sexual frustration and the party's repression of sexual desires. He recalls his loveless marriage to Catherine, a loyal party member, and an unpleasant encounter with a prostitute. Chapter 7 begins with Winston remembering his mother and younger sister. He contemplates whether life was better before the party took control, but he realizes he cannot trust his memories due to the party's constant manipulation of the past. Winston muses on the concept of freedom and hopes that the proles, the working class, might one day rise against the party. In the final chapter of Part 1, Winston takes a risk by speaking to an old prole in a pub, hoping to learn about life before the party's reign. He later visits Mr. Charrington's antique shop, where he buys a coral paperweight, symbolizing his desire to connect with the past. He also sees the dark-haired woman from work and grows more suspicious of her. Part 1 of 1984 sets the stage for the events to follow, introducing the key characters, the overarching societal structure, and the protagonist's struggles. The sense of constant surveillance, the manipulation of truth, and the struggle of individuality against a controlling mass power are themes introduced that will be further developed as the novel progresses. Orwell immerses the reader into the chilling reality of Oceania, laying the foundation for Winston's journey of rebellion. Part 2 of George Orwell's 1984 shifts the focus from the broader societal structure of Oceania to the individual experiences of Winston Smith, specifically his relationship with Julia, which develops over the course of ten chapters. In Chapter 1, Winston receives a note from Julia, the dark-haired woman from the fiction department, saying, I love you. This unexpected message throws Winston into a mix of shock and intrigue. The following chapter finds Winston and Julia secretly meeting in the countryside, away from the ever-watchful eyes of the party. They express their mutual hatred for the party, and Julia reveals her rebellious streak, having had multiple affairs with party members. Their relationship, fueled by their shared rebellious spirit, becomes a symbol of personal rebellion against the totalitarian regime. In Chapter 3, Winston and Julia begin their clandestine affair, making use of a room above Mr. Charrington's antique shop. Their sexual relationship is a form of rebellion against the party's repression of sexual desires. Chapter 4 delves into the regular life Winston and Julia start to lead, 
meeting in the rented room as often as they can without arousing suspicion. In this chapter, we see the tender, caring side of Winston as he and Julia create their own sanctuary separate from the party's control. In Chapter 5, Winston sees his former wife, Catherine, in a dream and thinks about the futility of their marriage. This chapter illuminates Winston's past, contrasting his current relationship with Julia. Chapter 6 explores the narrative of Winston's meeting with O'Brien, a member of the inner party. Under the guise of discussing the latest edition of the Newspeak Dictionary, O'Brien subtly inquires about Winston's loyalty to the party. Winston, interpreting this as a sign that O'Brien is part of the rebellion, openly declares his opposition to the party. O'Brien invites Winston to his house, giving him an address. The next chapter involves Winston and Julia visiting O'Brien's luxurious home. During this visit, O'Brien confirms their suspicions. He seemingly indicates that he's a member of the elusive resistance movement, the Brotherhood, led by the legendary Emmanuel Goldstein. They pledge their loyalty to the Brotherhood, agreeing to do whatever is necessary for the cause. Chapter 8 follows Winston as he reads parts of the book, supposedly written by Goldstein, which provides a theoretical understanding of the societal structure under Big Brother. However, Winston and Julia fall asleep while reading it, and wake up to find the telescreen hidden behind the picture on the wall of their room shouting at them, revealing their location to the thought police. Chapter 9 starts with the preparations for Hate Week, a major propaganda event. Winston's role in the preparations becomes more significant as an error in predicting the enemy's alliances forces him to work overtime to correct the mistake. In the final chapter, the anticipated hate week arrives with a surge of fervor and enthusiasm. In the midst of the chaos, Winston finds himself with a copy of The Book, revealing the true structure of society. As Winston reads, he learns about the futility of the Proles' rebellion and the purpose of perpetual war. 1984, is integral to the development of the novel as it focuses on the personal rebellion of Winston and Julia, who dare to defy the norms and laws of the party. It amplifies the theme of resistance and the human spirit's irrepressible need for freedom and love in stark contrast to the party's oppression. Furthermore, it delves into the complexities of the party's propaganda and manipulation tactics, ultimately culminating in a chilling cliffhanger leaving readers on the edge of their seats. The third and final part of George Orwell's 1984 pivots towards the harsh consequences of rebellion in the totalitarian state of Oceania, encompassing six chapters that bring the story to its tragic conclusion. In Chapter 1, Winston finds himself in the hands of the Thought Police after being arrested at the end of Part 2. He is held in a cell at the Ministry of Love, known for its use of psychological manipulation and physical torture to control dissenters. Here, Winston encounters various people, including Parsons, his neighbor, who was reported by his own daughter for thought crime. The chapter paints a grim picture of the terrifying power wielded by the party and the inevitability of capture for those who dare to rebel. In Chapter 2, Winston is brutally tortured. Amidst this, he is shocked to find that his torturer is none other than O'Brien, who he believed was a fellow rebel. It becomes clear that O'Brien had been setting a trap for Winston all along, posing as a member of the resistance to expose dissenters. This reveal shatters Winston's last hope for an organized rebellion against the party. Chapter 3 delves into the manipulative tactics of O'Brien, who uses a mix of torture and intellectual conversation to break Winston's spirit and make him accept the party's reality. O'Brien admits to the party's manipulation of facts and insists that reality exists solely in the mind. The party, he claims, has the power to control reality as it can control the mind. In Chapter 4, O'Brien continues to push Winston to accept the party's doctrine, using intense psychological manipulation and introducing the idea of double-think, holding two contradictory beliefs in one's mind simultaneously and accepting both of them. Winston's resistance weakens under relentless physical and psychological torture, but he clings to his love for Julia, his final act of rebellion. Chapter 5 delves deeper into O'Brien's manipulation, pushing Winston to the brink of sanity. O'Brien reveals the party's ultimate goal, total control over not just the actions, 
but the very thoughts and beliefs of its citizens. Despite the torture and mind games, Winston refuses to betray his feelings for Julia, revealing his enduring spirit. In the final chapter, Winston's transformation is complete. His spirit is broken after a horrific encounter in room 101, where he is confronted with his worst fear. In a desperate act of self-preservation, he begs for Julia to be put in his place. This act of betrayal signifies the complete victory of the party over Winston's spirit. After his release, Winston is a changed man. He meets Julia once more, but the love and rebellion they once shared are gone. He has accepted the party's control and even feels a love for Big Brother. The novel concludes with a portrayal of the ultimate triumph of totalitarianism, a chilling warning of the power of absolute control over the individual. Part 3 of 1984 showcases the chilling effectiveness of a totalitarian regime in breaking the human spirit. Through the brutal treatment of Winston, Orwell explores the disturbing lengths to which a regime might go to maintain power, illuminating the horrifying potential of absolute power and psychological manipulation. The ending serves as a stark warning against complacency and the unchallenged acceptance of a 